Marijuana is a plant, isn't it? It's a plant, cannabis sativa is the name of the plant. And the mildest form of uh, drug that can be prepared from it would be marijuana. It's the chopped up uh, stems, leaves, that sort of thing with the uh, seeds filtered out, yes. Cannabis is a fascinating plant. It's been used for medicinal and recreational purposes for thousands of years. However, despite its long history of use, cannabis has been unfairly stigmatized and demonized in many parts of the world. More than 37 tons of marijuana plants, along with bags full of cash and dozens of Rolex watches, were taken while breaking up a massive grow operation. NBC. One of the main benefits of cannabis is its ability to relieve pain and reduce inflammation. Cannabinoids like THC and CBD have been shown to interact with the body's endocannabinoid system, which plays a role in regulating pain perception and inflammation. This makes cannabis a potential powerful treatment for conditions like chronic pain, arthritis, and MS. But it also has the ability to alleviate symptoms of anxiety and depression, and research has shown that cannabinoids like CBD can have similar effects to antidepressants. But pain relief and mood regulation is not the only benefit of cannabis. It's also been shown to have potential therapeutic applications for a wide range of health conditions. It's far from a cure-all, but cannabinoids have been shown to help with epilepsy, cancer, glaucoma, and even PTSD. I recently sat down with Frank McFadgen, who grows and formulates his own medicinal cannabis. Here is his story about a little plant that changed his life. My name is Frank McFadgen. That's that's who I am. That's my name. Uh, I have a company called Up Above Extracts, but uh, I don't really want to talk about that. I don't really care about that. I care about uh, the plants and, and how it helps others. That's uh, who I am and what I'm all about. I come from a place where uh, drugs were always seen as, as bad and, and well, the, the word drugs is never used in a positive manner, even in a hospital setting. You need the drug. It's, it's not usually, it, does, it doesn't have a positive annotation to it, it's, it's negative. And I grew up in the same environment and I fell into the drugs and all the good times and everything that, that came with it and, and all the turmoil and chaos and prison and death and needles and violence and institutions. Uh, all of the wonderful things that are attached to the drugs. The reason that we're told they're bad and can hurt you and can destroy your life is because it's all true. It's very true. I found out firsthand it's very, very true. I've overdosed more than one time with because of needles. and So it is very, very true. I, I'm one of the very fortunate ones who came out the other end. Uh, most people who go the route of intravenous drug use do not live past 30. These are just numbers, but it's a, a number I escaped, thank God. Uh, and I, I got to a place where I was on certain medications, drugs, that... Uh, were supposed to be beneficial. I, I was told they were beneficial, and I, I, I had no reason to question that. These are experts and professionals, and and he's a psychiatrist and he's a surgeon, and you know these are they went to school for ten years after they graduated, so they must know more than I do. So I never, I didn't really question anything. I just okay uh, two a day and okay, and then. Uh, for depression and anxiety, of course, being a, being addicted to drugs when you come out of that, it's pretty hard to feel good about yourself and life because it's not good. After I was on their drugs for quite some time, it, it turned out to be detrimental, not helpful. I turned into a zombie robot with no feelings. And I want to be careful. I don't, I don't want to belittle pharmaceuticals or antidepressants or anything foolish like that. It's just it got to a point where... I don't feel I was being treated properly. So I left the scene and, and avoided drugs altogether, which wasn't a great idea either, because of course I went back the other way. And all along this route, you hear stories of uh, death, destruction, and all this stuff. And I, I get into recovery homes. So I, I'm trying to get my life straight. I hear all these stories of people who were successful getting off drugs. You mean I don't have to live? I can, what? Really? 
because everybody was just dying around me and that's where I was going and I hear people talk of there's something else. So I, I went for the something else and ended up in a halfway house in Charlottetown, PEI called the Talbot House. It's a halfway house for drug addicts, uh, parole. It's for addiction, people with addiction. There's not a whole lot of criminals in prison. It's addicts trying to feed the demon, a uh, very loud demon. Anyway, so in the, in the recovery home, I, I meet all kinds of good people with this, the same mindset. Uh, life sucks. I'm here. I have nothing. I'm beat up, mangled, and there, there is a life out there. Drugs did this. Drugs did this. Because drugs are bad. Ish. And uh, met a fellow there named Jamie. We became good friends. Very good friends. We were close to the same age and uh, a lot of similar things with music, stuff like that. So we just kind of clicked. And a lot of the same stories with uh, the growing up, the mom and dad, all that, the trauma that brings you to the drugs. So we got pretty close and we, we lived in the house together for a year. And, and after the recovery home, there's a second level to recovery because it's, it's quite a journey. Uh, we were in that house together for a while too. So life goes on. I met some friends. I got clean and sober. I moved to New Brunswick. I was working with churches and, and other groups and people to uh, kind of share my story of getting away from, from that lifestyle. And, and, and in the process... Um, all of that chaos and destruction from the drug world. I was no longer dealing with that, but I, I come to discover new chaos and turmoil with, with health and, and wellness, where there's a lot of my friends were getting older. I'm 48 now. Uh, there's ailments showing up, and uh, we, we've all dealt with cancer and on one form or another. We all have. We've all been touched by it, and, and it's not a pleasant thing at all. And my friend Jamie contacted me, uh, out of the blue, we hadn't spoken in years, and he was in turmoil. We contact each other on social media like most people do. Don't have any real friends. They're all a number on the side panel thingy. And uh, he shared with me that he was having some health issues prior to this for a few months. And it, and it came to be that he shared with me that he had just been told he had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he didn't have a long time to live. And couldn't imagine what was going through his head, but it, it, it certainly threw me into a shock because you're supposed to be experiencing life now. You're not a drunk anymore. What? Uh, it seems so unfair. And of course, uh, he was looking for a friend to lean on. I'm like, uh, uh, I can only imagine the kind of support that you need for that. I, I'm, I'm glad I don't know personally, however. Uh, he wanted to assist in his own treatment. He didn't want to just allow the treatment to happen to him. He was scared and confused, of course, I can only imagine. And uh, he wanted to use cannabis. And he knew that uh, I had grown cannabis and I had experience with cannabis. And he read the stories that we've all read and heard of Rick Simpson oils and cannabis oils, curing cancer and killing cancer. And n nobody was sh sure if it worked, but these are plants and he wanted to try it. Would I help? So of course I said yes. Um, not having a clue how I was going to actually help, but you don't say no to that question. And it came to pass that I did a whole lot of reading and research, and, and uh, it was beneficial for myself too, because at the time I was taking Oxycontin for my back, which is injured from years of car accidents, fighting, stuff I don't remember, uh, the lifestyle I led. And I was taking Oxycontin, which I was told was bad drugs, blah, blah, blah. They're not good drugs at all. But I, I didn't get any options from the medical society and the only options my friend with cancer was given was drugs. Um, again, I don't, I don't want to badmouth drugs, but it's, drugs seem to always be the answer for what's wrong and what you need. It's drugs hurt you, but you need drugs. Like it's, it's, it's a weird thing. And for years we were told cannabis was, an, was a drug, one of the bad ones. Uh, we weren't told of its benefits, of, uh, that we have an endocannabinoid system that looks for that stuff. We were all ignorant to this, me included. We all were, because we weren't given the information. The information is there, though. So once, once I start digging and, and finding things out and come to discover uh, it doesn't officially cure anything, uh, doesn't officially do anything, but get you high. Officially, that's what cannabis does. It, we didn't even call it cannabis for years. That's what it is, but the media, the TV, the them, the they, whoever they are, decided we need to make it sound bad, and it was called marijuana. 
there's a whole big story to that, but it, it got to the point where, where drugs were even, the names were even altered to make them sound bad. It's, uh, I don't know what happened to us, but that, that is what happened. And uh, going through that entire journey, with uh, you learn you're, you have ailments, your friends have ailments, uh, your mom has, all these ailments come to life and illnesses, disease, sore, all these things kind of show up. You get older and they just kind of show their face. And it's the same response as back then. Drugs. Well, I thought drugs were bad. Well, not these ones. You, well, Oxycontin is a narcotic, and should I... I was a drug addict. Should I be taking that? Yes. It, it will help you. And my friend looked it up. He said, chemotherapy, is, isn't that mustard gas? Like, isn't that a death chemical made for war? Yeah, it is. Well, what are the options? There isn't any. And there, there, there really isn't. And, and for people in, in immense pain, the option is narcotics. Long-term narcotics, it just seems so unhealthy, unsafe, because it is. And uh, high blood pressure. Just take this pill forever. We have to check your kidneys every now and again. Because they might... So I, there's all these mixed messages. Well, I thought what drugs were... Are they, are they good now? Yes. But they hurt me. Those ones did. So get all these mixed messages. And then, and then when, when you hear and read the stories of cannabis and, and plants and, and mushrooms and all these things, like there's an awful lot of people that try and sway you away from that. Oh, those tree hugging, those hippie people. Like, yeah, okay, you want to smoke a joint. Yeah. No, I don't actually want to smoke anything. I, I just want to be well. I might smoke something. If that's going to help me be well, then yes, I'll do that. But not because somebody told me I should or shouldn't. I, I want to just, I want to check this all out. And it was, uh, I learned it was hard to get some answers because uh, some of the people that had the answers were angry or scared or ignorant. And I was all the above. I, I didn't know. I'm scared for my friend. I'm scared for, I'm like, what do I believe? What do I not? I don't really know. So I had to go searching for, for papers and, and, and I confirmed, well, cannabis oils, and that they, it does kill cancer in a dish in real life. It doesn't always work, but it does work, but no, it doesn't. And all of these things, we all heard the stories, we've all read it, we all know. So what, what I started looking for was why cannabis kills cancer. So then you find 8 billion hits as to why it does, I swear it does and it does, and you get testimonials. And, and then I would also look for how cannabis causes cancer, and you get 8 billion hits. Oh, cannabis did this and did blah, blah, blah. So it, what you're looking for, you will find. That's for sure. I hate this. That's all you're going to find. I think this is fake. Well, you're going to find all the people that agree with you. So it's, it was hard to seek the information because this is what we do. Uh, young people don't even have a computer. They have their phone. They're not... It used to be a keyboard. <laughs> I was going to do this. <laughs> it's now this. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, it's the first thing we do is we go to the internet and we search because we can. We have the entire planet's information is at our fingertips. Literally is. That's great and terrible all at the same time because you will find exactly what you're looking for. So I had to look for facts, not, not opinions, because I have an opinion. We all have an opinion and I'm usually wrong. So why wouldn't everybody? I don't. Opinions are great, but I, this is kind of serious. My friend is going to die. I, I need numbers. I want, I want numbers. And I looked and I looked and I looked. The numbers are actually phenomenal at anecdotal uh, evidence. Uh, I don't know why a large number of people with the same result isn't evidence. It's called fake evidence. It's not real evidence. Whatever. Um, it's all I needed to put all the time, energy, effort, money into maybe assisting my friend in not dying. There wasn't much of a thought process as to if I was going to do it or not. Of course I was going to do it. Then I, then I had to find a whole bunch of cannabis. and uh, Because I, the cannabis has been a thing in my life for some time now, but not pounds of it to make a large quantity of oil Repeat, like that costs a lot of money, time, and energy. And how do I do this well medically? Uh, I, don't, I don't want to get my friend high. Um, him and I were in recovery homes. We 
We're well-versed at getting high. We know how to do this. We, we wanted health. How, how do I make this product? So then it goes to back to the internet. How do, and I had to go to university websites, look for white papers. I didn't even look on the Rick Simpson website because Rick Simpson was a guy who had skin cancer, made oil and rubbed it on and it cured it. Great. That is fantastic. Rick, I love you. Thank you for sharing your story. It is, it is incredible and it is awesome. I wasn't dealing with a red blister. I was dealing with a dear friend who was dying internally. Hodgkin's lymphoma is like blood cancer. Like there's, it's not a good thing. It's, it's just not. And it's, 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 they're both serious. I'm not trying to belittle anything, but uh, I just, I seen it as a pretty big deal and I didn't even want to look at Rick's anything because I need to kill this somehow. Can I? Will this work? Is there a God? Is, does he give us his plants? Is that scripture true where the healing is? Is it, is it like what? Ah, somebody's going to die. It's kind of overwhelming. So I learn and read and learn and read and learn and read and read and learn. And I, I do look for both because you, you don't always find the universities that have done studies. You don't always find a lab that's published what they found. It's, 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 it's actually hard to find factual information. It is really difficult. Opinions are a Google away. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really easy. And, and my opinion's all over the internet too. Um, but those are just opinions, and I'm usually wrong. So it was going back to the nature of the plant. That what are cannabinoids? What are terpenes? What do they do to cancer? Do they do, they do it to cancer, or is that just some Bob said so? Or did Rick say so? Like, I don't care what Rick and Bob said. I want to know, like, did somebody with a lab coat put this in a lab environment and say yes or no? And I found out, yes, there's all kinds of those studies that have been published, and when you put cancer cells in a dish and you introduce cannabinoids, THC mainly, the cancer dies within 20 minutes. And that's not my opinion and it's not your opinion and it's not the lab guy's opinion, it's what happened in the dish. And they recorded it. And it's happened in many places uh, and they recorded it. And I figured, well, uh, it's not fake. It's not just a story on the internet. Um, People in the lab did it. So, and I, I also read that, you know, you can read, read that cannabis cures everything from from my eyelashes are too short to I have an ingrown toenail to I have herpes or or, or Hodgkin's lymphoma. You hear all those stories, but you can also find the stories that say uh, cannabis gave me cancer or gave me herpes and it ruined my life and my wife. You can find those stories too. So I, I just wanted to look at the the facts and the structure of the plant, just the plant itself. What is it? What does it do? Why were we told it's no good? Like, and the, that's a kind of a rabbit trail when you start looking there because you get into conspiracy stuff and it's, it's hard to, you, to get through there. I just left because I don't really care. I care about if this plant can save my friend's life and if, if I eat the oil, do I have to take those pills? Maybe... Maybe I can just eat this and not have to take those stupid... Well, i got insurance and it pays for it. If I do the weed, i got to pay for that. and Because no, no government will pay... No, nothing will pay for that because that's drugs. Right? Still. Uh, unless you have glaucoma. Anyway. So, I got the recipe. And I got it from... I, I, I won't say exactly where I got it. But it is one of the producers in Canada that does medical cannabis only. There is no recreational side to this company. It is strictly medical. And uh, two of their people that do the research and science are living examples of anecdotal evidence that it does kill cancer. They're, they can't prove it, but it's their story, and they're not liars. So I got the recipe from them, and there was a couple things added to the product uh, to, to help bypass the blood-brain barrier. Uh, scientific nerd terms for that. It, it, it helps your body fully absorb all of the cannabinoids everywhere. And, that, and, and there's additives, it's really simple things too, because it's all food, it's all our fuel. I believe health is way easier than we've been told. I, I really believe that because um, all the anecdotal fake evidence that's all around me and the people that continually ask me for the oils. Jamie is not dead today. Sorry. 
Ah. I'll get it out in a second. Yeah, he's not dead. He's going to work. He builds fences. Uh, you can't you can't do that when you're dying of cancer. You, you can't lift steel and you can't do that. Um, you can't do that when you're high either. Uh, maybe you can. I don't. I don't really know. I don't think you'd be very successful at it. Really high. Um, there's no cancer in his body anymore. He's just. Uh, he's got some side effects and some maybe some lifelong negative things from the cancer treatment, not the cannabis. The official treatment drugs. Official treatment for cancer will cause him to experience pain for the rest of his time on earth. His joints don't really work. Um, he's dealing with some, it's way past arthritis. And he, he, he's an amazing human. He's not angry at the medical system that tried to kill him by saving him, by killing him, by saving him. Because hopefully the cancer dies before the chemo kills you. Like we all know this, just nobody really wants to talk about it. But I'm that guy. Chemo will kill you with that's that you know how many children die of cancer that don't actually have cancer when they die they're dying from the treatment and we all know that too and jamie's not angry at anybody he just does his best to walk around with a cane smiling and goes and builds fences and he's able to do that uh, it's just dirt it's just dirt and a plant. Um, and all over the planet, it just grows wild. It really does. It grows wild all over the place. Not here because we, we demonized it a long time ago. Um, <coughs> and as a result of Jamie's uh, ancidotal uh, evidence, his, his fake whatever. I'm sorry, I'm a little cynical, a little bitter maybe. Uh, in all this, uh, there's other people that have reached out and said, Hey, Frank, Jamie's not dead. Like, I know. I, he's not dead. He's, he's working. He's not, not, he's not even sick. He's sore because the treatment hurt him. But he's going to work. He makes good money, too. Like, he's doing good. Like, he's doing all right. And uh, it's just wonderful. And a, a lady on Facebook um, how can I purchase this? I also have a company called Up Above Extracts, and it's—I uh, don't like to talk about it because it's not—it's not a for-profit thing. It's just not what it is. It may look like that, but it isn't at all. If it is, I suck at it. <laughs> anyway, uh, reached out, Frank. I have stage four breast cancer, and uh, I don't want to die, and I don't want to take that stuff. I don't want to burn it. I don't want to take that mustard guy. I don't want to do. I really don't. I don't think that's a good idea. I've read all about the cannabis. Can you sell it to me? Uh, I, I'm, doesn't that make me a drug dealer? Wait a minute, that's not drugs. We're in Canada, cannabis is legal. And it's med, what? I've been brainwashed too. I've been brainwashed too. That's not evil, that's not, that was illegal. How long was that illegal for and, and why? Well, there's all kinds of reasons why, and I don't, I don't really know the, the truth or the facts. I have my opinion, and I'm probably wrong. Uh, but I know today there's uh, several people who claim, and I believe 100%, that uh, cannabis made them well, made them whole. I haven't had an Oxycontin in years, and uh, dancing's one of my favorite things in the whole world. Uh, I, I couldn't even walk to the park that's a few hundred meters away just a few years ago. It wasn't that long ago. And now I'm older and other things hurt. I can run to the park and run back and I don't need a Tylenol. I don't need any of that stuff. I, I eat cannabis oil. And it's to the point now where I believe some of it's healed some things inside me where I don't even take it daily anymore. I used to need it every like six hours or so. I don't, I think I had some oil four or five days ago because I had to move a bunch of printers and stuff at work. Um, I, I'm not going to claim cannabis cured me of anything, but I will tell you, you can ask anybody that knows me. My, my wife will be home soon. My mom is over there somewhere. Um, there was a lot of years I, I couldn't pick a pencil up off the floor 
there was, I couldn't do it. I wasn't physically able to do that. I'd have to stay down there and plan how I was getting back up. Um, I have puppies. As soon as I get home from work, first place I go is to the floor. I don't even think about getting up because I can like jump up. Well, not jump. I'm old and fat, but I can get up pretty quick <laughs> right? without hurting myself. These, there's ladies on the internet that are receiving oil from me. That, that, that There's some people that are still generous and kind and, and grow cannabis and have, have donated cannabis so I can make oils. And, and I just give it to these people because why wouldn't I? I'm able to. Um, uh, it's not about money. It's not, the, the, the company up above Extracts is kind of a, a face to put on something that's up above. It's, it's, it's just amazing stuff. It's a, it's a plant. It's to, put, it's to put a face on it that, a, that somebody can say, I can donate, I could purchase or whatever, because I, I will take people's money for the product um, if, if you have it. Um, but really, if you have it, because it'll help pay for somebody else. Because I don't. There's no price. There's no like none of that stuff. It's a. I make the oil because it, it works, uh, and when you get the recipe from uh, nerds in the medical field who know the plant inside and out, uh, there's no chemicals used. I only use living soil. I use dirt and and decaying matter because that's what plants want. The, the cannabis industry and many of the, the, the gardening industry, they, they all want to chuck chemicals and fertilizers and, and they may all have their place and all that stuff, but uh, this, this isn't uh, an ornamental garden. I'm not trying to make my walkway look pretty. I'm not trying to kill any bugs. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to benefit people health-wise, myself included, of course. My mom, my mother is upstairs, so I, I feed this stuff to my mother. I make MCT oil for her, and uh, I make sure that it's just an organic thing, and I remove the cannabinoids, and there's all kinds of ways you can ingest it. Uh, I, I like the Rick Simpson oil because it, it also removes the green from the plant, which is beneficial. It's all beneficial, and it's made with iso alcohol. And there's all kinds of stories in the internet. Oh, that's terrible. Well, if you do it the way you're supposed to do it and you follow everything and you have testing equipment, then it, uh, you just end up with cannabinoids at the end that your body screams and longs for. We found out our bodies have an endocannabinoid system. So I heard that. So I'm like, what is that? Frank, you need to check this out. And I'm like, oh, is this a new thing? No, it's the human body. It's not. It's not new at all. It's just something that was kind of shoved aside, um, not kept from us because information is there. It's just how do I find it? And I come to discover that uh, the that receptor system that looks for cannabinoids that can only come from one place. Cannabinoids can only come from one place. Your body and my body have receptors for it. Just like we have receptors for when you eat a potato, there's parts in your body, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys that know exactly what to do with the nutrient, the good stuff that's in that tater. It knows exactly what to do with it. It longs for it. It needs it actually for life. You need it. It's required or you'll die. Um, I'm not saying you need this or you'll die. That's crazy talk. However, um, if I have a system that's engineered for this, like potatoes, lettuce, carrot, why, why, am, why am I not putting that in my body? If, if, I, if I need to, if, if, there, if there's a reason to, why, why am I not? Why, why was I told I shouldn't? And all of these questions came. And what it did, it just drove me into digging as to what is this endocannabinoid system and what does it do? Where is it? It's the only receptor system in your body that lives on every organ, including your skin, including your skin. Like this, this is a, it's like earth shattering for me because um, that means that it's possible that the cannabinoids can fix, repair, help any part of your body because it, every part of your body, your earlobe can receive the, the, the fuel. What we ingest is fuel for our machine, and when you put the right fuel in it, you have a tip-top running machine. You have a great machine. I'd like to be a funny car. I'm kind of like an old Model T with a steam engine, but 
I used to be a moped, a 32cc two-stroke moped. And I, 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 can't, I can't help but rant and rave about the benefits. Not because I think marijuana's good, you smoke a joint. Uh, it's, not, it's not about any of that nonsense. It was when I was 20. And, and you know what, the young people, recreationally, whatever, fill your boots. It's, it's certainly not what I'm doing today at all. It's just not. It's a, it's a medical thing, a beneficial thing. I've come to discover that the human body wants to be whole. It, it, that's, its default setting is to be whole and healthy. And we've put so much garbage in it, not, not consciously and not willingly and not knowingly. We're all overweight. Take a look at the world statistics. Why are we overweight? Well, it's our fuel. It can't be anything else. It's, it's our fuel. Our fuel is poison for the most part. And it doesn't have to be. And not all of it is. But it, it, we're just not... I don't think we're fully aware of what's available. I just don't think we are. And, and when we do look, why does cannabis not cure cancer? That You're going to find exactly what you're looking for. It's to try and keep... An open mind. My, my mom is 70, uh, almost 80. When I brought her here, her health, she was near dead. Like literally, I, I, she was in the hospital in PEI so she, two years ago now. During COVID, that was an interesting journey to go get her in PEI. It was like getting removing somebody from Alcatraz way back when. However, she was in the hospital. My son, who's in PEI as well, you're, like, Nana's in the hospital. She's not well. I'm like, what happened? Oh my God, what happened? I don't really know. She just hasn't been well and she's not well. I called the hospital and it happened to be her family doctor that was on at the hospital at the time. So she actually called me back and told me. I met this lady before. Um, mom wasn't well and she was going to be found dead eventually, home alone. If she went back home alone and kept up the lifestyle, she was going to be found dead sooner or later. Um, well, that's not okay. So we renovated the home. Mom is here. Well... I've just spent a long time in a couple of years researching cannabis. I don't take pills anymore. My friend's not dead. There's all kinds of people that did have cancer and they don't anymore. Can, can this make my mom whole? Can this help her? How do I do it? She's older though. She can't take that level of can. That's a lot because Rick Simpson oil is really strong. It's really, um, it kills cancer like it does. So it's, it's, it's got some kick to it. I, I learned that MCT oil. It's just a coconut oil, a certain form of it, and it's very beneficial. The fats are just beneficial, period, by themselves. And for older folk, it helps with cognitive. It just helps a lot of things. So I found which strains, because there's a bazillion cannabis strains. When you go to the medical side of things, things make a whole lot more sense. They're not called blueberry, raspberry, fritter, glue thing. Um, they're called Charlotte's Web because this strain helped Charlotte, who was a little child, not die from epilepsy. So it makes a whole lot more sense when you get in there. They're not called sugar berry plum and stuff. You know what I mean? It's not, a, it's not meant to be appealing. It's, it's meant to have a name, so this has a name. And you, and you just get to learn what works for what. And my mom now is uh, perfectly fine. She loves to go shopping at thrift stores. She's, she's supposed to be found home alone dead. Um, the, the variable that changed, the addition in her world, was in a bottle right over there. It's a, you can buy that at Walmart, MCT oil. You can buy, like that's how run of the mill product it is. It's at Walmart, um, but it's a superfood. It's, no, do you know how many people don't know that? There's all kinds of superfoods at the Walmart. Like it's the Walmart. Like the, it's just it's all of this stuff is right around us. Do you know that there's stuff in your front lawn that can cure a headache? and kill infection in your yard, everybody's yard. And the answer is no, I didn't know that. For most people, because we just, we don't know that, it, we weren't given the information, and we've never really felt we've had a reason to seek the information. I, I don't, anyway, I guess I only should speak for myself, but I never really felt I had a reason to look, what's another way to cure a headache? I have Tylenol in the drawer. Like, why, what do you mean? I can. There's a form of grass in my front yard. If I just eat that, it's like a morphine. What? No, it's not. That's crazy. Well, it's not crazy. It's just in the front yard. You know, we, we spoke earlier. Where does ibuprofen come from? Well, it's, it's a tree. It's the skin of a tree. You know, it's um, all of this stuff. Uh, Louis Pasteur. How, how, where, where did penicillin come from? I was molding the dish. Like, ac accidental cures are found all the time. It's, and the information is all there for us. 
and it's just how to how to find it and, and if you're willing to to utilize it and, and and be take the risk is it correct uh, there's really only one way to find out you can blindly believe whoever you like you can choose that i I spent too many years as a con man. I, I, I'm not able to do that. I have to try myself. What we looked earlier in, in my room, there were the clones are like, oh, Frank, they, they look sick. They're very sick looking clones because I'm testing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying new things. I'm risking losing a bunch of plants because I might be able to help somebody a little bit better with fuel that won't kill you. You know, that's one thing I can say for absolute certainty without any question at all. There's all kinds of theories and stories and proof and no proof that it cures and doesn't cure. Blah, blah. One thing is absolutely certain and proven. It can't hurt you. Um, it, it, it can do negative things to you if you start leaning on a, on a smoking product to deal with your life, of course. That's, that's a different story. But cannabis it's, itself, uh, it, it, can't, it can't hurt you. It's impossible to overdose. It's not humanly possible to kill you. That's not drugs where I come from. How's that drugs? Drugs kill you, don't they? Aren't drugs bad? Well, no. I, I, I believe the lack of information is what can be considered bad. I, I don't know if it's bad, but it certainly put me in a place of ignorance and pumping myself full of poison, not really understanding what I was doing. I, re I really didn't because I don't think anybody wants to poison themselves. I didn't want to weigh 300 pounds at five foot five. I didn't. I knew I wasn't eating properly, but I didn't feel like I was eating enough to weigh 300 pounds, and I probably wasn't, but my body so, was so riddled full of stuff it shouldn't have been, box food and all that crap, right? When, when we can just grow your own food in your yard, and when you start doing that, you go, oh my, this is so much better. Oh, it's not even, it's not even comparable. Well, when you learn how to make your own medicine, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. It's the same astonishment. Like, oh my God, this is so much better. Uh, my headache's gone. My stomach doesn't hurt. I don't have to poop. Like, um, hey, and I slept like a log last night, and I feel like a million dollars today. My knee feels a little bit better for some reason, probably because CBD is the world's greatest inflammatory. It's right there. It's right there. You just got to let it finish growing. Cut it down, cut off some parts, let it dry out, and pour it in stuff and suck some juice out and eat the juice. It's, a, it's amazing. Even the greens are good. Just eating the greens, it's wonderful for you. Great for your digestive tract. I grew up in a household where marijuana or cannabis was heavily vilified. It was something that any type of smoking was frowned upon and looked down upon. And talking to Frank and talking to other people who either grow cannabis or have been using or growing it, for years has really been an eye-opening experience and actually leaving Frank's he gave me some seeds and I've had them growing for the last little while now if you're watching this and you are in the United States um, it may be illegal where you're at but in Canada it is legal to a certain extent you're allowed to grow a couple of plants or a few plants and I'm excited I'm excited to try different medicinals I'm excited we grew up we grew up in a, a household where we use things like echinacea, we use things like honey lozenges for your throat, and I'm excited to learn about more alternative medicines. Nutrition was always something that was very important to our family, and it'll be something that we're talking about in an upcoming episode as well. And uh, there's so many things that the mainstream doesn't necessarily teach you and doesn't necessarily tell you, and I'm excited to learn about. And this may look like an iced coffee, but this is actually chaga, a mushroom. You can make tea out of that has a ton of benefits. And uh, that will be on an upcoming episode as well. Like Frank said, there is so much information out there with regards to cannabis and hemp and the benefits that it can reward you with. Now, if you'd like more information with regards to alternative medicine or homesteading, visit homegrownshow.ca. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. This here batch is going uh, to battle cancer. 
uh, I'm, it's White Widow because it's extremely high in everything. Anybody who's dealing with pain or, or sleep or like joint pains, headaches, that, that type of thing. Well, the name GMO, it's garlic, mushroom, and onion. And it was given those names because it, gives, it has the, a lot of the same benefits as those three foods.